Hey guys, it's Deacon Matt. I'm here today with another reflection. It's Thursday of the octave of Easter. And um, all of the gospel readings that we've been getting during this, this Easter week have been talking about the, the first encounters that, uh, that people had with the risen Lord, with the resurrected Jesus. Um, and yesterday we looked at the encounter uh, that the disciples had on the road to Emmaus, where they recognized Jesus in the breaking of the bread. And our gospel reading for today picks up where that left off, right? The disciples are talking about this. They're sharing that good news. Right? Can you believe what happened? Jesus was with us. And as, as they're talking, and this is Luke chapter 24, uh, beginning verse 35 through 48. As they're talking, it says, He stood in their midst, Jesus stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought they were seeing a ghost. Right? So here, this encounter is a little bit different, right? They don't fail to recognize him like in uh, the examples that we saw yesterday and the day before, right? Where Mary Magdalene thought he was the gardener um, and the disciples on the road to Emmaus, you know, didn't recognize him at first until he blessed the bread and broke it and, and gave it to them. And then they recognized him in the breaking of the bread. No, they recognize him now. They know who he is. This is the Lord. But they're a little afraid because they think that he's a ghost. And he says, you know, he says, peace be with you peace be with you. And then he says, why are you troubled? Why are you troubled? Why do your questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost doesn't have flesh and bones, as you can see that I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? And they gave him a piece of baked fish. And, and he took it and ate it in front of them. What a, what a touching moment of just shared joy. When I'm meditating on this scene and I'm imagining it in my head, I get to see this big smile on Jesus' face and smiles on the faces of all the apostles that are there and just, you know, how happy they are to be with Christ and how happy Christ is to be with them in that moment, just eating that piece of baked fish, right? And then Jesus said to them, you know, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. And then again, he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. He taught them. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. And, you know, if you ask someone objectively, what's the most important thing that, you know, is from this gospel passage, you know, you might say, well, it's, it's that teaching that Jesus gives to the, to the, uh, to the disciples and, and the commissioning of, of them. You are my witnesses of these things. And, and that is important, right? We are witnesses of Christ's resurrection. But that's not why this gospel passage really stands out to me. What I find most touching about this passage, and I think what you find most touching about this passage, is just that camaraderie and that fellowship that Christ is enjoying, and yeah, enjoying with his, with his friends, right? He's, he's there with them, and he's happy to be there with them. He's like, hey guys, I'm back. And no, I'm not a ghost. Like, I'm really back. This is me in the body. See? Feel my hands. Feel my sides. Feel, you know, feel me. I'm really here. And I'm kind of hungry. Have you got anything to eat? Oh, fish. I love fish. Give me some of that fish, you know? And I can just imagine them, and I'm meditating on the scene, laughing with each other and just enjoying being there. And, and to me, it's, it's kind of like the exact opposite of the Garden of Gethsemane, right? When, when Jesus was experiencing his agony in the garden, it was a night before he was to suffer. And he knew that the most difficult thing that he would ever have to do was, was right there before him. He was preparing for that. He was in his anguish. And he wanted that fellowship with his friends, but, you know, they couldn't even stay awake with him. They, they kept falling asleep, and he must have felt so alone and abandoned. And but now we're on the other side of that and he's back and he's risen from the, the tomb and he's with his friends again and there's nothing before him but joy and peace. And he gives that peace to them and he's just, you know, the disciples are glad that he's there and he's glad to be there with them and there's just such, such joyful fellowship. That's what I find most touching about this, this passage and I'm sure that's why it touches most of you as well. The teaching, the commissioning the, of, of the disciples as his witnesses, that is important. But 
I think why the disciples probably remembered this and why it was written down in Luke's gospel is they remembered that time of joyful fellowship with the Lord and the teaching that he gave them sunk into them and was meaningful to them because of the context in which he he offered it, that context of joyful friendship and fellowship. Um, and that just really got me missing our normal campus ministry activities and, and, and the things that we do, right? The teaching part of it, we're able to still continue to a large extent. You know, I, I do these YouTube videos. Um, I'm, I'm meeting with, with a lot of you guys, you know, online but with Zoom and Google Hangouts and all of that. We're, we're able to, to email back and forth. We're still able to do Bible studies. Like the teaching part, that's happening. That's great. And I'm grateful for that. But what I miss is that, that coming together, that joyful fellowship. That, that, that time of breaking bread and sharing meals. And, you know, like I'm thinking about our Wednesday night programs. You know, there's a reason why we do them the way that we do them. Christ gives us this model, right? We come together first for dinner. You guys show up at our campus ministry house. Hey, do you have anything to eat here? <laughs> like Jesus came to the, to, to the disciples, right? Have you got anything to eat? Okay, let's eat. Let's share this meal together. Let's enjoy being in one another's company and have this Christian fellowship. And now let's talk about our faith. Let's talk about our shared encounters with Jesus and what that means to us. And, and then we end our evening with a time of prayer and adoration, giving praise and thanksgiving to our Lord, right? There's a reason all of that is in there and takes place as it does. And it's rooted in that fellowship. And, and that's what I think we're all really missing right now in this time of social isolation. We still have spiritual fellowship with one another. Right? We're still part of that same body of Christ. Praise God for that. Even the, the hermits in the desert still have that. Um, but you know, we're not all called to be hermits. We're called to be um, you know, in fellowship and to enjoy each other's company. And, and that's what we're missing. And it's right for us to miss that because we're not meant to be alone. We're meant to be together. We're meant to rejoice together, especially during these joyful seasons such as Easter. So I long for the day when we can do that again. And uh, until we're able to do that, know that I'm here with you in spirit. Know that I'm praying for you. And, and I hope that you're continuing to, to pray for me. Right? Christ is risen. Alleluia. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. God bless.